and it's unbelievable that if a small amount of of spent gnat go out onto the lake it's unbelievable how the trout will come up to take them so you'll nearly always see trout this is any gnat goes out especially early in the hatch you'll nearly always see fish coming up to take them hello and welcome to the ireland on the fly podcast about the people and places of fly fishing in ireland Continuing our Mayfly episodes, this week we hear how the season is going so far on Loch Sheelan and we're joined by Eamon Ross from the Loch Sheelan Trout Protection Association. Eamon, thanks a for joining us. So, how has the Mayfly been so far in Sheelan? So, look, it has been really, really good this year. Um, and and, and it's, it's early yet on the lake. It's early. It's only, you're only a week into it, but it has been exceptionally good. The weather has been very, very kind to us. The lake is at a, a nice level. There's a nice sprinkling of fly, and the fish seem to be uh, obliging um, for now, anyway. So it has been really, really good so far. So I suppose I'm, 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 I, I may not be the, the best qualified angler to tell you how good the, the, the fishing is on the lake, but I'm seeing what I'm seeing. It, it appears to me that everybody that's out there are either seeing fish, getting fish, or having a they're having a fair good time, or else they're telling me huge lies. Which is always a possibility as well. <laughs> never, never <laughs> wouldn't believe it, Eamon. Yeah. Well, you know what fishermen are like, Tom. So <laughs> it, it, it has been a strange year on Sheelan because from in March, usually I would have had great fishing in the in the wet fly, very, very poor this year. In March, we had I'm sure you had the same, the lake levels rose to a really, really high levels very, very quickly in the middle of March towards the beginning of April. So it was tough fishing. And then the buzzer came along and there was exceptionally good fishing on the, on the, on the buzzer on Sheelan this year. Um, and it seems to be continuing right into the Mayfly. So the Mayfly started, I suppose, I was out on it last Friday, probably for the first day. And I had a couple of trout on nymphs and I had actually a trout on a spent last Friday evening. So, so it has been... You know, I'm hearing reports of big bags of fish from some anglers who are fishing nymphs, and and um, uh, you know anybody that I'm speaking to that's out there are getting are getting fish. One of the things that I've noticed as well is that, and I noticed this around the lake. I, I do a lot of looking at people, and I probably should do less looking and more fishing. But anyways, I love watching what's going on around me, and I know it's extraordinary the change that has taken place in about three or four years, whereas you would have seen a lot of wet fly fishing going on on Loch Sheelan. Um, even on a day like today, and I know there was a bit of brightness today, but there was nice cloudy conditions today. 90% of the people that I saw fishing today were fishing nymphs. Uh, some of them may have been fishing dry fly, but loads and loads of people are fishing nymphs now. So it has become um, one of the methods for catching fish. Now, having said that, uh, all the fish are being caught. A lot of the fish are being caught in nymphs, but a lot of the fish are being caught in nymphs because everybody is fishing them. So whether yeah. or not the wet fly would work as well, I know I was talking to a man this evening and he, he he said to me that there was people out Saturday fishing wet fly and they had seven or eight trout in the wet fly. So the fish are up, the fish are up. So, uh, But it's, it's, it's an extraordinary change to see the amount of people that are fishing nymphs. And the other thing that's really, really, and it's a positive thing, but the amount of people that are catching and releasing is just phenomenal. I'd say that 95% of the fish are going back. And look, I don't begrudge people to fish for, for to keep a fish. Um, but if all the fish that are caught were taken out of it, the lake would be emptied. It's, 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 uh, you know, I've, I've, I've heard, I know of one man, I had the dinner with him today on, 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 on the shore. Um, John Murray, John Murray from, he's from Tubbercurry, living near Ballymote now. And he was out in all morn. I think John had ten yesterday, um, which was an ex it's an extraordinary day on 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 Loch Sheelan to get ten trout in it. Like, there's a lot of people who wouldn't have got ten in the season, so he had ten yesterday. And there's a sprinkling from, you know, you're getting fish from a pound and a half up to four and five pounds. So it's really really good. Thank God. Wow, it's really t it's really turned out, starting out to be a really really good season there, Eamon. It is, really yeah. And uh, I, I suppose there's there's parts of the lake, and I'm I'm trying to remember back. So last, uh, I, I I can I, I kind of benchmark things with the time the international was on it. So because I fished the international in Sheelan in 2012, mm. and it was held on the 19th of May, 
And I, I, I was secretary of the club at the time. And of course, you're always worried when you have a, a competition like that on, on the lake. You're, you you want it to be good and you want it to be you want it to be positive for everybody. And uh, on the 14th of May, I thought that there was going to be no Mayfly because there was nothing there was nothing showing down the lake. And uh, similar to that this year, um, when so I'm not sure do you know the lake, but if you go up towards Orange Field, or if you up the shallower end up towards Fane, mm. the fly have begun to hatch up there this year. Uh, that's where the earliest uh, fly was, and you'd normally see them beginning to spread out across the, the um, I suppose the northern and eastern end of the lake as the as the weeks would go on. But that's only happening now, so it's probably a little bit behind time. But it's no harm to that. They'll, I said that there'll be probably good fishing right if the weather keeps going this week and next week. So I'm 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 taking holidays next week and going out. Keep me fingers <laughs> crossed. I'm sure the weather will change now and there'll probably be a frost. <laughs> Don't be thinking like that. It's going to be perfect. <laughs> I'm really enjoying it now. I was out. Um, I've been out a couple of times, and 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 I was out this evening. I'm just in. I'm really having a great time on it, even though I'm not getting big bags of fish. Um, Any luck this evening, Eamon? I had one on the spent, and I had one on the nymphs. Now, I, 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 a thing happened to me today that never happened to me before on Oshilin. I hooked two trout at the same time on the on on. I never did it before on Sheelan, but I hooked two at the same time on the nymphs this evening or earlier in the day, and I lost the two of them. Um, and I had a lot of activity with with the nymphs, with pulls and hook and fish and losing them. And it was genuinely exciting for the day. I was out with um, Trevor Goulden. He's from Sligo. He, 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 his great claim to fame is that in the last day of, that he fished on Loch Sheelan last year, he won the boat in competition. He had a fish just short of eight pound. And he, he, he hung the fishing rod up in the shed. Uh, and he came back on the 17th of March. For This is his first day out again, and he went to Loch <laughs> And he got an over eight pound in the Kilroy Cup. And did he change the cast? Not at all, no. Same <laughs> cast, same flies. And he has this thing called, he calls it the Colga Bumble, but he won't show it to anyone. Uh, <laughs> he even wouldn't show it to me. I don't know what to make of him. He wouldn't show me the fly and me and the boat from all day. But um, I was out with him today, and we had a great day. And he got a lovely fish this evening about... I'd say he would have been close to five pound on the spent. And I got one before that, probably five and a half or six pound. So you just, the, 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 the size and the quality of the trout are phenomenal in it when you get them. And tell me this, Simon, as the season goes on the next few weeks, will the fishing get better? You know, they'll be coming up for the dries more so? Or What I'd expect is that as it moves down the lake, you'll have a good bit of fishing next week as the it provided the weather stays because we've had like weather compared this year compared to last year. It's it's yeah. nicer and, and, and it's there's a bit more nature in it. It's a bit warmer now. It wasn't that warm this evening, but at the same time I was in my short until probably nine o'clock and I had to put my coat on me then. Like last year, you wouldn't go. You wouldn't have been. You you would you would have been frozen if you had your short on you. So so it, it has been better for, from a weather perspective, and I think. Um, it hasn't been as windy or as rainy as last year. So we had a very, very hard time last year on, on the lake uh, trying to get Midland weather to, 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 to fish properly. Um, as the time goes on, Dara, my experience of Sheelan would be that as the Mayfly goes on, it will get harder and harder to get them because the fish will gorge themselves and you'll get them on the dries possibly in the evening. Uh, but you won't get as many fishing in the nymphs and you won't get as many fishing in the wets as the, as the as the hatch goes on. So there's probably another fortnight left in it. And then you'll have a bit of spent for another week after that. Uh, actually, I mean, talk to me about this, the, the, sp- the spent, Damon, because we were um, chatting to Mike Keeley last week about carb and, and Tom and Mike were saying kind of how the spent on Sheelan is um, much more prevalent compared to carb. Well, remember that Sheelan is probably like a bay in carb. You know yeah. what I mean? It's small, I, and I don't mean it's. I know it's four and a half thousand acres, but when you when if you dropped it into Carob, you wouldn't see it in it. Uh, so it, it, you have a concentrated area of so there's massive hatches of fly. If you didn't do anything other than went up to look at the hatches of fly, 
it will be worth it from the perspective of of of, of, a, of a natural phenomenon. It's just unbelievable the hatches that are there, and when when the spent go out, it is like snow. It's like it, it, you think it was snow, and there's so many of them go out. So, so as 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 next week comes on, you'll have massive, massive uh, falls of spent. But it's difficult to compare it with Corrib because Corrib is such a, a large lake, and you might have to spread the spread a fly around the lake. Um, it wouldn't be as concentrated in the Corrib as it might be on Sheelan. Um And and if you look at Sheelan as well. It's it's averaging. I think the average depth of Sheelan is about fifteen feet. So there's an awful lot of the lake where fly actually hatch. So they hatch all across the lake, and no matter what way the wind is going, fly will always get into the bushes somewhere, and they'll get back out again. So you you, you you have it's 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 difficult to compare the two places. Um, but it has been traditionally and has always been a great lake for spent gnat fishing, um, mm. and it was one of the things that. Uh, you know, when I went up from when I left Sligo and went to Cavan, I didn't know what a spent gnat was. I used to fi- I used to fish them wet. <laughs> I used to pull them pull them on the top trap, and I got I got trout in them. And, and did you catch and, on? The, did you catch fishing them wet? I did. Yes, I got fishing them wet. The, the only thing I could say to you is that if a fish followed you, you'd never get them. But normally, you'd get them. You'd feel them. He'd be on, and that would be that. And I fished them in a wave, pulling them in the wave, and got them caught fishing it. Yeah. Actually, I mean, do you know what we might do is just for if people are wondering, we might just explain quickly just what we mean by the, the spent gnat. Okay, so so the, the, the gnat is, see, so the greens hatch, so there was a lot of greens hatching today and they fly into the bushes. They, they're the lovely olive yellow green color and after I think a day or two, they molt and they turn, the, their wings turn black. So you, they're, they're essentially black and white. They become the Sligo colours. So they 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 they, they become black and white. We won't me- we won't mention last weekend anyway. But just don't, keep on don't mention last it. weekend, Thomas. Okay, last time I'm going to a football match when there's fishing to be done, anyways. But anyway, <laughs> never mind. Um, I, 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 we we so so when they, when they go into the bushes, and, and this is the same for a lot of flies. Like I keep bees as well, and the bees do the same. So then they they, they dance above the trees. So you have the you have you have swarms of of mayfly with females and males dancing up in the air. So they dance, uh, and if conditions when conditions are right, they go out and they lay their eggs on the lake. So you you'll have um, thousands of them will go out together. Now I was I watched them. I think it was Monday night, um, and they danced, but it was cold. So they went back into the bushes. So it would be like if you were in... Tom, you might remember the dance halls. You're old enough to, to remember dance halls. If you went outside and it was real cold with the girlfriend, you'd come in again. You wouldn't You wouldn't stay out. But if it was a nice night, you might stay out. So the, the, the gnats are a bit like that. If it's a nice night, they, 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 do, they do a bit of courting. And off they go out into the lake to lay their eggs. And, and they but die they, on the they, lake. They, they find they like for that. the courting. Right. Say that again. They need a fine night for the courting. They do, yeah. They need a fine night and they need a nice, a nice warm breeze so that uh, it puts them in the humour. And you're right, I do remember dance halls. Oh, man, you're telling me. Well, <laughs> look, look uh, that's, that's the way of it. And, and y- you have this huge natural phenomenon happens. They go out onto the lake and it's unbelievable that if a small amount of, of spent gnat go out onto the lake, it's unbelievable how the trout will come up to take them. So you'll nearly always see trout. If this is any gnat goes out, especially early in the hatch, you'll nearly always see fish coming up to take them. So, so they go out on the lake, they lay their eggs, and then they'll, they die and they lie flat on the water. <clears throat> but you'll see some of them fluttering on the water. And, and the trick then is it, it depends on, the, on when you're fishing for them, when you're fishing with them. We have all sorts. Everybody has their own favorite kind of a, of a spent. And... You know, if there's a bit of a wave, you'll get away with with um, rough looking spents. But if 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 it's anyways calm, you really need your spent to lie flat in the water, and and you 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 have to present it fairly well, and you have to have great patience. In that, I was out the other evening, and there was fish. They were going around mopping up spent, and mine was in the middle of them. And twice I lifted, thinking that the trout had taken my one when he had taken the one beside it. 
And if I had to wait another split second, I'd have probably caught him. So I frightened him. And, and it's just such an exciting way of fishing that it's, it's, uh, it's great. I love doing it. And you said there, like, because I've never seen it, the visual element to it alone, like you said, even just even if you're not fishing, just to see this yes. phenomenon happening, like it's 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 so unique. And I, I think that's a really good point you were saying about Sheelan because it's it's much more concentrated, so it's easy, easily to kind of and more easy to see it as a, as a kind of a as a phenomenon like that. Actually, just, I did want to ask you, um, because you mentioned like how many more um, people are fishing the nymph and catching on the nymph. Will those anglers then, I wonder, change to the to the spent knot? You know, when they start seeing the fish taken there, like, I wonder, or will they stay with the nymphs? Like, well, it depends on the sort of angler you are. At the, I, yeah. I was talking to Tom about this the other day. There's, um, I, I, I might chat to you some maybe before we're finished about about what drives us or what brings us out on the lake and whether whether it's enjoyment or how do we get our enjoyment out of it. And we can only speak about that from our own experience most people will will change when they see fish rising now mm. sometimes it doesn't pay to change so so especially if they come up on greens you, if you're fishing the nymph and you see a few fish up on the greens there's always a temptation to to go on and and, and fish dries uh, and you will get fish on them but you'll also get fish on the on the nymph when there's when there's fish up i i love to see fish up on greens when i'm fishing the nymph because you can you can be sure that for every one that's up, taking them on the top, yeah. there's ten down underneath, taking the nymphs on the uh, underneath. On the you're, uh, you're only seeing uh, a small percentage. Yeah, so they tend to come up and follow it up. But when when they go on the spent, you might as well be idle as thrown in. You, you you know you're wasting your time doing anything other than putting a spent in front of them. And then even sometimes when they're on the spent, you have to be careful that uh, you know, especially when it comes to late at night and it's a nice warm evening. Sometimes they're taking buzzer. And, you know, they'll come around and selectively take buzzer. So uh, I know there's a good friend of mine that died, the Lord of Mercy, uh, last year, John Murphy. John would have always said to keep, you know, as the, as the hatch goes on, always put a buzzer on the dropper uh, yes. and just make sure that you're, you're covering all aspects. So, so most anglers... Will uh, will if they stay for the spent? Or, or I, I've I've heard the saying as well, where um, some fellow said to me, the day shift is finished now, and the night shift are coming out. So that the people who are finished nice. the nymphs go in, and the lads that enjoy the night night fishing will come out, and and some of those lads will will stay if the morok comes up. So they will stay fishing the morok, and the the morok will start now in another couple of. You'll, you'll probably start to see them in maybe in a week's time. So and th- and that's generally speaking, you're talking about from ten to eleven until quarter to twelve. So it's dark when you're fishing them. So mm-hmm. that's the night shift. So most people would change when they when they when they see the, the spent coming out. What's your favorite? Uh, to, is it for the spent? I I love fishing the spent. I love fishing dries. Yeah, but look, it, 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 it's often hard to describe it, Dara, because there's a great excitement when you're fishing. There's a great excitement with, with wet flies. I love fishing wet flies, but I know that if I was fishing wet flies today, I probably wouldn't have as much action as I had with the nymphs. There's something very, very exciting about fishing the nymph. You're fishing it slowly, and the next thing it just locks up, and you're 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 either in the fish or you're not in it. And it's there's a great excitement to that. And I, I do describe it as it's like I don't know if you've ever fished on the blind with two dry flies so so i've often done that and it's really exciting fishing where you're you just throw them out and you're you're, you're hoping that a fish will come up and you can do it with the i'd often do it as a green and a spent when the when the when the mayflies and chilling but all you're doing with the nymphs is you're doing exactly the same except it's underwater so you're, it's like underwater dry fly fishing and and you're just throwing it out and you're you're just hardly moving it and hoping that a fish will come along and um and take it and you, you 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 see things. So, for example, today I I had I was down at the back of uh, outside of Crover House, and I had six takes in about ten minutes. I had four fish on and hooked, and I lost four of them. I'm a desperate man for losing fish. Well, I had a, I, I had a really exciting day today. I landed two, but I had, I had far far more. Um, I hooked far more. Um, but you have those bursts of, of activity. And when you have those bursts of activity, you're, you're, you're totally in the moment. 
it's it's the best form of mindfulness that you will ever get. Um, and and I, I went out I went out the other evening. I went out after a day's work, so I was working, and all of this work was going on. So so I, I know we all have to do our jobs, and we have all stuff going on in our head. But I, I went out on 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 Monday evening, probably around half six, and there was stuff going around in my head about what I needed to do the next day, and uh, and I, I I don't know at what stage of the the fishing that I started. Uh, I don't know what stage it all went out of my head, but I noticed after some time that everything was gone. All the anxieties, all the worries, all the thoughts about what I might have to do, was all gone. And you were, uh, and I was totally, totally focused on the trout that were rising around me. And I was trying to see how I'm going to catch one of them. And it, it wasn't that I was even consciously aware. I wasn't thinking that way. You 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 do these things without without having thought. Uh, if 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 you can understand what I'm saying, so you 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 become part of where you're in. It's great. It's it's just a phenomenal way to be. A hundred percent, and 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 even um, like when I try to explain it to people, you know, don't fish. Um, friends of mine, or you know, even just. <laughs> I remember when I was uh, when I'd written the book and I was doing media and I was talking to the presenters and they're like, but you know, how can you explain it? Like, and I was trying. That's exactly the terms I was trying to kind of put it to for that people would understand it. I said it's like mindfulness, you know, when you're in nature, you know, and it was kind of like that was a way to kind of that people kind of could try and grasp it. I said if you if you want to get away from it all and you want to be in nature. You know, this is this is the best, and you also, if you happen to catch fish as well, well and good. Like, but uh, no, and I, I, like this time of year, it is magical, isn't it? For it, like to be just like the evening. Like I was just, I wasn't out and out tonight. I was just coming home this evening, and it was nine half nine. The sun was setting. It was a yeah. perfect evening. Yeah. I was like, oh man, I wish I was on the river. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's just and it's it's, it's a very it, it, special it, time. And, it, you know, I I do a lot of thinking about stuff like that because I, I love bringing people out, but I like fishing on my own sometimes as well. And sometimes you need to go out on your own to to I don't know, is it to connect or to, there's something about being out on your own in the water, um, and and you get totally at one with it. It's it's not as if you have no you have no thought about it you're just you you, you only know this you, you know it you don't think it if you it's so hard to explain it what is because i've like i've been to carb during mayfly i've never been up to sheelan um and during it, what's it like is there that kind of similar to carb where you've lo- you've more anglers you've more more boats out, you have more, there's a real buzz in the air, the anglers are all kind of eager and keen. Do you have that kind of sense oh, yeah. of, oh, it's Mayfly season, it's Sheila? I'm going to I, I'm going to try to describe what I experience on it. And uh, when I'm describing this, I hope I'm not being insulting to anybody because I'm, I'm this is what I see. Um, so there's a huge excitement. So we're like, there, people are like children. You have adults that are like children at Christmas. And everybody is, I suppose, mad to get out. And, you know, so there's a bit of a rush going on. And at times, um, patience um, and, and <laughs> how would I call it, uh, you know, when you, when you see um, kittens uh, fighting with one another, we sometimes the anglers will do that or they get annoyed with one another or they drive across one another. And these things happen and look, uh, it's all part and parcel of the Mayfly, and we get annoyed with one another sometimes. But overall, there's a, there's a, there's a genuine, I suppose, um, niceness about it, for want of a better way to say it. So it's it's there's there's a nice, you know, people share a bit more, I think, and but people definitely tell you more lies at the Mayfly time as well, because if if all of the trout were caught on Sheelan that are being are, that are supposed to be caught on it. Uh, it would be two foot lower at this stage because we have taken so, <laughs> so, so such an amount of, of weight out of it. And like I'm seeing people as well. So and, and I was probably like uh, I've done all of these things. So you have people and I was telling, uh, telling Tom about this the other day. I was kind of I, I, I have what I've descri- I've des- what I describe as the accountants or the counters. So you have people who are totally totally mesmerized with numbers and 
it's the numbers that they get and the numbers of fish that they get. Mm, yeah. And if you're talking to them, if they have one less than somebody else, that's a failure and it's a disaster. And and I often wonder to myself, do they get the same enjoyment out of it as I do? Now, probably they do. They get People get experience enjoyment in different ways. And then you have people who are into the big fish and they want to get the big, big ones. And if they haven't got the big, big fish, uh, or if somebody gets a bigger one, they either say that their one was bigger or they feel that they didn't do as well. And it, so you have that, that happens. And, and it's particularly evident in Mayfly time. Um, you have the people then that are what I'd call the lazy anglers who go out and they catch one and they spend the day around talking to everybody and, and, um, and, and drinking tea and making sandwiches and cooking on the shore. And that's really nice. It's a nice thing to, and it's a nice way to do it. Uh, but one phenomenon that that really fascinates me is is the whole social media piece and and the need that appears to be out there to immediately put up on social media. Now, I, I I don't have a Facebook account, so I don't know what happens. But people tell me that these things are they're either up on Facebook or they're on WhatsApp. You know, immediately up. As as this is the, that I've got one or I've got ten or I've got four or the, there's a fly hatching over at Derry Sheridan and he's a, he has only one wing, uh, you know, it's pure absolute rubbish that comes up and 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 that's that there's an awful lot of anglers that seem to have got caught into that that piece with social media and with phones and I do often think to myself that the phone is a nuisance in the boat no. I use the phone in the boat and I keep it in the boat sometimes. Um, and, and, and now there's times I did, I'd have it on silent. But if I wanted to, if we wanted to ring someone that we wanted to go for the dinner, we, we, we do stuff like that. But I, I've been out at anglers that are full time, full time on the phone, mm. either texting or, or, you know, reporting, getting reports. I, I got reports from England about some fella catching a fish in at the back of Church Island and I'm in the lake. <laughs> I really don't want to know that. I, I, like, it's, the information is no use to me because I'm out for my own day. Do you know what I mean? But, but this information is amplified and spread around and it's just truly amazing. It's just fascinating to watch. It's, well, it, and it's funny because it goes back to it's the complete opposite to what we were talking about in terms of the mindfulness and, and being yeah. in nature. <laughs> The last thing people, and, and this, you know, the, like talk about, you know, wanting to be in the moment, whereas these people are actually thinking, oh, we need to share this and I need to get so many likes and I need, you know, the last thing they're thinking about is being there in the boat. The thing is, you know, they're, they're elsewhere. Like, I'm not saying that I'm any different than any other anglers. And I think we all share some of those things. So we all, we all do some little pieces of those things that I see every day when I'm up there. I get grumpy sometimes when someone drives across in front of me. And there's absolutely no need for me to get grumpy because they're all nice. You know, when you actually talk to people. Sorry, and, sorry, and sorry. I, I, thought, I thought you went like a kitten. You know the way kittens fight. <laughs> well, you not say you, you, so you went like a little playful kitten when somebody went in front of you. Ah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> do, you ever, do you not see the kitten? Sometimes they scratch it up. <laughs> <There it's... laughs> but, but you know we are, well look I don't say we all do it but but you 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 do but one of the things that that fishing and and that relaxation piece of it can do for you is it can it can make you aware of those sort of things rising up within you so that when somebody and, and the other thing I've noticed as well this is one that I, I I get a great kick out of this one now so sometimes when you're down at the end of a drift and you begin to go back. I dawdle back on the, on the engine nice and slow most of the time. You'll see sometimes another guy or another boat will see that you're moving. And it's nearly then, it begin, be, becomes a race then to see who's going to get there first. So, so, so sometimes when, when, this, when the other boat moves, I just increase the speed to see what's going to happen. And he'll increase the speed. And you end up that... It's, it's just so funny when you do it. So you should try that sometime and see what happens. Uh, do you know what he's? You know what that other fellow said in the boat, uh, Eamon? That, he said, yeah. "Watch what happens now when I speed up. This other fecker across yeah, the way speeding yeah. up. Like, what are people like? You wouldn't believe yeah. it. Like, yeah. watch him, well, watch look, him, I thought about that as well. But anyways, it's, it's um, 
I suppose one of the things that fishing does for me is that it brings an awareness to me that that's within me, that I have that that competitiveness to get there before the other guy and, and to push them out of the way. And it's not, so from that perspective, it's, it's not a nice thing within me. So I should be saying to myself, well, look, it's great that you get that awareness that 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 could I could be doing that in my in in my work life or I could be doing it somewhere else and you're not even aware of it. So you do get an awareness when you're out fishing. It you're 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 much closer. You can you can you can actually observe yourself a lot better out there. I think I'd never do that now. Anyway, Would you not, Tom? Oh, yeah. geez, no, no. <laughs> I saw a boat coming up the lake and I wanted to do a drift again. I'd say no, let them in now. I let them go there now, and I'd wait <laughs> and I'd wait. <laughs> <laughs> you do you never get do you never get a sense of satisfaction in going in behind the fella and getting the throat off him? <laughs> yeah, that's because it doesn't happen too often. <laughs> well, I know, but does, did the thought never cross your head? Well, uh, when no, you go in I, behind you someone, oh, I'm after getting the one that he missed. Well, you know, now that you ever said to me, I might try it the next time, Eamon. <laughs> <laughs> and you can put it on social media. Yeah. Oh, I'll have it up straight away. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> well, Eamon, it's been brilliant chatting to you. Um, we started off on Mayfly. We ended up on social media and writing the, the wrongs of the world. Um, it's been a brilliant self-help half hour. It's like being therapy on the couch, I think. Um, it's yeah. been, no, but it's been brilliant. I think you summed it up great in terms of the Mayfly, the excitement, um, the special, unique uh, time of year it is. And this is what we're trying to do with these episodes. Um, you know, During the, you know the next few weeks, is really trying to capture that. I have to get up to Sheila now and have a look at the spent that sometime. It sounds incredible. Um, I'd love to see it and just to, to be able to fish in it sometime as well. But Eamon, thanks a million for joining us and um, tight lines for the rest of the season. You're welcome. Thanks very much. Lovely talking to you. Our thanks to Eamon Ross for joining us on the show. And don't forget to rate, review and follow the Ireland on the Fly podcast on Apple, Spotify or wherever you get your podcasts from. Plus, you can keep up to date on ourlondonthefly.com as well as on Instagram. And myself and Tom will be back with another episode about the people and places of fly fishing in Ireland. <laughs>